All right, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and don't forget PacWestBigfoot.com, PacWestBigfoot.com. You can go over there and subscribe for the free giveaway. This month, Cryptids artwork on a coffee mug and a couple prints from Sarah Bergman. So there you go. Also, real quick, before we get into this week's encounter story, I want to say and give a heartfelt, um, let's just say, prayer and thought out to those of you in Texas. Uh, also, if there's anything <clears throat> you good old, uh, you know, Pack West Bigfooters out here can do, uh, whether you can give a little bit of time, <clears throat> donate some things, uh, give a little money, whatever it is that we can help out our fellow Americans uh, down there, that would be great. Um, and uh, our, our basically our thoughts and our prayers are with you guys. <clears throat> so let's get a sip of water. Hot day here in the Pacific Northwest. Don't know if you guys know, but <clears throat> while they're being flooded, we are being burnt out, literally with a couple wildfires that were burning on both sides of us. Uh, one day, we could barely see outside. There was so much smoke coming through, we almost decided to leave town because of the air quality. So it got pretty bad, and <clears throat> we're all kind of scratchy-throated around here So still. Uh, but it's clearing out, and we're all doing okay. So there you have it. Um, with that, let's get into this week's Based on True Bigfoot Encounter story from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> Idaho camper gets Bigfoot visit at night twice. I did eventually go camping again, <clears throat> howbeit at least two years after I was visited by a Bigfoot at night, twice, while camping in Idaho. While one part became scarier than the rest, not all of this experience was frightening. As a matter of fact, I have a massive amount of respect for these things. And they are around. <clears throat> Here's what happened while camping near the Black Rock campground in Idaho. Bigfoot and the camper. I am part Native American, and yes, my mother would always tell me stories of and about Bigfoot. Okay, not always, but it was part of our culture from way back, so I heard some here and there. Personally, I was never a believer. Like my dad, I have considered myself a pretty level-headed guy, and that myths were myths, and Little Green Man were racked up there with Bigfoot and Old Nessie. <clears throat> but Bigfoot is real, and I would know. I actually saw one, and it visited me two nights in a row, in fact. Like my father and mother, I love to hunt, fish, and just get out into nature. I am a carpet cleaner by trade and is in a city outside of Boise. And getting away from it all is much needed from time to time. <clears throat> of course, I did the college thing, actually in Oregon. But I came back, <clears throat> took over the family business eventually, and turned it into a rather highly successful business today. It allows me to have more free time, and yes, I still spend time in the woods with my own family today, and often. But I'm always aware, I am always have my wits about me, and I teach my daughters the same. <clears throat> Even they know of my encounter, and unlike me with my mother, they know I am telling them something that happened to me personally. <clears throat> I do not think personally that these things are hunting us, but I do believe they are opportunistic, like any other wildlife on this planet, and that can be a bad mix if you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. These things are quiet, but massive. Agile, strong. But here's what happened, and how I found myself staring into the eyes of what some deem a monster of the woods. <clears throat> it was late September 1998 when I decided to get some camping and fishing in for a couple nights. Black Rock would be the place, and Boise River would be the place to fish. I spent most of my childhood around the outskirts of Boise itself, where I was born. The year of the experience was the year I actually took over the family business of carpet cleaning and already had enough business and work coming in to warrant the hire of two employees. This allowed me to take off a couple nights and days to get some fishing in and get some time outdoors before winter would hit. <clears throat> winter could be very cold here for those that don't know. Of course, I was not going to stay in the campground area exactly, but near it at least. Personally, I like the area, <clears throat> more mountains than the valleys where I am from, and the woods, well, we are still in the Pacific Northwest here, very much so in fact. Some think that it is only up near and in the Nez Perce National Forest in the handle part of the state that is mostly forested. That is not completely true. Here, outside of Boise, about 45 minutes, you'll climb into the low coniferous forest before you get into the more barren type of high country. And like I said, 
Personally, I prefer the pine forest here more than the high, more barren areas. Fishing is also good here. In fact, some of the best fly fishing and angling can be done in Idaho. <clears throat> Heck, we are right next to Montana and Wyoming where the world's best fishing is done, hands down. But this time, I was staying close to home and just getting out as winter would soon hit us, like I said. I never thought much about Bigfoot growing up, even when occasionally my mother would tell me stories of the Sasquatch. I went back as far, it went back as far as our people's history went here. I do not remember too many of the stories, but there were plenty. For the most part, though, I do not recall too many bad or horrifying stories, but it was not a good thing to stick around when they were about, she said. They were wild, a wild people, after all. She called them peoples a lot. Even to this day, I'm not sure about that, about them being people, but... I am sure why that might why they might categorize them as people or a race. They share similarities to us. The perfect camping spot. <clears throat> I decided on the perfect spot up the river about a hundred yards or so just past the campgrounds. No, I I knew I would not have to worry about the authorities and park service as they were not around, nor were they that picky back then as they are today. My experience actually started before evening on the first night. <clears throat> it was about dusk when I kept hearing something or what I thought was something up the hillside across the river from me. I was northwest a bit from the actual campground and across the river was a thickly wooded hillside. After setting up my campsite, basically a tent and stacking some wood near the fire pit, I decided to get some dinner, as in fish. Just above on the hillside, hillside while fishing, I could hear what sounded like people or a person talking from time to time. I also caught a couple whistles as well. Nothing seemed overly strange about the noises. The campground was not full that time of year, but there were several or more people when I showed up. It was not as if the place was empty. I could hear them off on and off for about 30 minutes or so, as if someone or some people were running around the hillside just out of sight. I thought nothing of it and kept on fishing. Dinner was caught. A great trout, actually. Caught, I caught a couple smaller ones, of course, but I got a big one. I cooked the fish, stayed up well into the evening. Did not remember heading off to bed until about 11 or so p.m. I set one small log on the fire before I headed off, though, and that was it. Lights out for me. That did not last long, however. It started around 1 a.m. in the morning. I remember looking at my watch as the whole experience was rather weird. I woke to something walking around my camp and literally breaking branches. Snap! Crack! At first I thought it was a bear, but this did not sound like one at all. Cougar or mountain lion, some might think, but that was simply out of the question from the sound of it. This thing, or whatever, whoever, sounded bipedal. It was walking around the camp, snapping limbs off left and right. I figured it must be some ding-dong kids harassing me of all people. So I decided to get out of the tent, brandish my rifle, then get back to sleep as they would most likely take off after that. Well, it worked. I stepped out of the tent, held my rifle in my hand, and the sound over to the right of the tent by that time stopped, and then they seemed to move off towards the dirt road not far away. I went back to bed, but it took, a, took me a bit to fall asleep. It was strange. Every few minutes or so, I swear, I could hear a faint whooping like monkey sound. But I gave it up to a known animal, like an owl or something, and, or the people themselves, and finally fell back to sleep. <clears throat> a lasting impression. Noticeable would be the least I could have said about them, but the tracks I found near the river's edge were huge and looked to be human, just bigger, and the big toe was cockeyed. The next morning after breakfast... I decided to get some more fishing in, and that is when I came across some of the largest footprints I'd ever seen on a person. And that is when I started thinking about the old stories my mother told me about Bigfoot. The whistles, the talking I could not make out the day before along the hillside, well, things started adding up pretty quick for me. <clears throat> the morning and up through the end of the day, however, all was quiet other than some boaters here and there couple that came passing by near my camp and of course catching some great trout my mind i remember kept reeling uh, though through the stories of bigfoot my mother told me and then 
A little nervousness set in when I started to think about the warnings she gave. These things were not to be trusted, <clears throat> and whenever they were around, it was best to leave the area immediately. I thought more about it, but after a while, I let it go. I was starting to get worked up by that point and freaking myself out. I moved my mind to other things after a while and headed back to get dinner started that second night. I also remember heading down to the river's edge to look at the tracks again, but for the most part they were gone. The wet sandy banks had taken back the impressions left earlier that morning or late the night before. It stood there, staring at my tent. Dinner was great. Reheated mac and cheese plus trout is always perfect. I still bring that with me today, always. I could hear other campers through the evening, kids, adults, and some, even some pets, I think, enjoying themselves. <clears throat> right after this visual, I have to say I was a little freaked out knowing this thing was around, and so were children over in the campground. Everything had finally settled down, and I was using my flashlight and shining it out into the darkness here and there to make sure whomever or whatever strolled around camp the night before was not around anymore. Satisfied, after a few seconds or so, I headed off to bed and actually felt rather at ease after a few minutes. It was about 2 a.m. in the morning when things would get, well, scary, even a bit life-threatening, if you ask me. I did not feel safe at all. <clears throat> I felt as though if I made a move, I was a dead man, truth be told. Like I said, I, I was a decent ways away from the campground itself, basically just in earshot if they were loud like earlier in the evening. But that far away, around 2 a.m., the morning I finally realized that was a mistake. But like they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. Something woke me, and it was the sound of my stuff falling off a small folding table I had brought with me. But it could not just fall off. It had to be knocked off. I realized that I started to wake up a bit more and really come to. Just as I sat halfway up, I watched as a huge shadow passed between my tent and the campfire that was still burning lightly. It was a human shape or silhouette at that. I was going to shout at them, but the way in which they seemed to move, well, it glided almost as it strode off just out of the light. It seemed unnatural, not human-like at all. I slowly got up and situated myself, I remember, near the only window the tent offered to my right. I quietly unzipped it and stared out into the dark looking for movement. I got movement all right, and what was staring back shocked me so much, I felt massive, a massive amount of fear come over me all of a sudden. This ain't Harry. I still watched Harry and the Hendersons, but, boy, <laughs> what I was staring at and what was staring back in my direction was not a friendly giant you want to take home. Maybe it was its size, but for the most part, and for me personally, it was the way in which it stared in my direction as if it were waiting for me to react so that it could do what it wanted. I kept still, dead still. This thing, this Bigfoot, was dark in color. Even from the flicker of the fire I could see it was solid black in color. It was, the, it was that close to the light and myself. I could make out the fact that its eyes shined or reflected red in the firelight, and its head basically sat between its shoulders as if there were no neck at all. Its head was also cone-shaped, like many descriptions I've heard since this sighting. I cannot make out too much of the face itself, other than its eyes seemed pretty sunk in, or else the brow line was seriously protruding out pretty far from its forehead. Its arms were long, and this thing literally stood at least ten feet tall. I would gather that in the morning when I compared it to the tree it stood in front of at the moment. Trust me, my fishing pole was six foot, and this thing was way taller than that. It stood there, slightly hunched with arms that seemed to stretch at least five to six inches past its knees. I did not notice claws or anything like that, but this thing was a total V-shape, torso of massive muscle and power, you could tell. I could hear it breathing as it stared at my tent. It sounded like it had some sort of raspy chest cold, but I think that was just how it sounded normally. Maybe. In its left hand was my loaf of bread. No joke, my bread it had taken from the table. I had it on before I went to bed. I forgot I left it out. Everything else was in the ice chest with straps around it in the back of my tent. It did not move at all, but I knew it could see me, and every few seconds or so it would flip its upper lip. Like, I don't know. It was odd, but it would still stare at me, or in my direction. 
I could not tell what its teeth were like exactly, but the mouth I could see was huge, and a part of me was glad I could not see much of the teeth. This thing did not seem to, well, be all that nice. A part of me kept saying, sit still, and do not move, and I listened to that voice. After twenty seconds or so of this thing staring at me, it turned and walked off into the river, literally. I heard it move through the water. Then I heard its heavy footsteps move up and over the hillside past the river in seconds flat. It was a deep, slow part of the river, so sounds could be heard well through the canyon there. I waited till sunrise, packed up, and left immediately. Freaked out, but I'm still camping today. I have to admit that I <clears throat> was scared, so scared, in fact, it took me two whole years to get the nerve to start camping on my own again, and yes, in the same area. I felt threatened to tell you the truth, not that it was going to eat me or anything, but threatened as if I was standing, and I was, in front of a wild animal, and it was a stare-down. These things exist, and they are animals, giant ape-like animals that are as wild as anything else out there. My best advice to you is to always be armed and always be aware of your surroundings before you decide to camp somewhere, anywhere, and always look and listen for the signs of Bigfoot. Thanks.